Hey you! Welcome back to another video. My name's Jack, the snack that smiles back, and today we're gonna look at some stuff in the revenge category of life with this incredible arc of a story by Flying Monkey 737 a sexual perv. Revenge is sweeter when they don't know it's you. So this is a story about a guy I considered a friend. To this day, he has absolutely no idea that I am the main person who exposed him, and I hope to keep it that way. The main characters in this story are myself, the butthead pilot, girlfriend 1, girlfriend 2, girlfriend 3, young female pilot, and a bunch of other randoms needed to fill out the story. I witnessed most of this myself, but I also included details from other people who witnessed things when I was not there. I fully trust the sources of these reports. So the booty face pilot is a pilot, as the name suggests, but he doesn't work for an airline. He started teaching at a flight school in his 20s, but decided to strike out on his own because, well, as he told everyone else, he could do it better. He spends the next few years trying to destroy the reputation of his first employer. The booty face pilot is a very likable guy, and lots of people think he's awesome and believe him. I am one of them. Now when he starts out, he drives a super terrible car, doesn't have an office, gets evicted from his apartment for not paying rent, and so on. But people like him, and they help him set up a school and help fix it up, and generally give him a hand. Every once in a while, people get ticked off at him because, well, he does terrible things to other people, but his circle of friends defend him and just think he's great. He tells these pretty whopping tales, like he's funny, and people naturally like to be with him. A lot of his stories have made up details designed to put other people down, but he tells them in a highly entertaining way. His behavior is a bit crazy, and some of the reason people hang out with him is that he will do crazy stuff that is not normal. Plus, now, he throws good parties. Because everyone knows you're a justified a-hole if you can host parties well? <laughs> He also has this cute girlfriend, girlfriend one, and they end up living together. To be clear, she is pretty cool. Definitely not a raging bee. It is fun, throws him a huge party for his 30th birthday, and so on. Now, while he's with girlfriend number one, he's still coming on to other women when she's not looking. A couple of times, I have seen him totally love bomb a hot girl, usually someone in a vulnerable position, like if he knows she's going through a bad breakup. He showers them with attention, gets them totally interested in him, says girlfriend one cheated on him, they're on a break, or some other such story that isn't true. He sleeps with them, and then he goats them and says they're crazy, and does anything else he can to get rid of them so girlfriend one doesn't get suspicious. As an example, after he cheated on girlfriend one with one girl, she tried to get in touch with him after he ghosted her, which is actually a reasonable thing to do. Instead of talking to her himself, the butthead pilot lied and told everyone she was crazy and was stalking him, reported her to his friends at the police department, and had the police call her and tell her to shove off. On top of that, he also starts telling these crazy stories about Girlfriend 1, totally criticizing her behind her back, telling everyone what a loser she is, and generally not appreciating having a relationship that most people would love to have. So you get the idea on how he treats women. When B-Star Pilot and Girlfriend 1 finally break up, he told everyone that she was cheating on him when it was the other way around. His excuse for tanking an interview for his dream job was that he discovered Girlfriend 1 was cheating the night before, and he was an emotional wreck, and that's why he flubbed the interview. There were a bunch of inconsistencies with his timeline, and I knew it wasn't true, but he told the story to anyone within earshot, and people just accepted this version of events. And so, he made everyone hate the ex and feel sorry for him, which is a common theme. So, anyhow, he and girlfriend one break up. He is drinking heavily, partying all the time, and a bunch of us get a front row seat as he comes close to destroying his life, parties hard, acts like a sleaze, hits on women constantly, and works his way through any woman who will sleep with him getting some new low records. A few months later, he hooks up with one of his students, let's call her girlfriend two, and pretty much immediately moves into her house. This seems to stabilize him and help him get his life on track. 
Over the next few years, he gets a cushiony offer flying corporate charters. He's a likable guy, which helps him get a sweet contract as a private pilot for a billionaire, which he brags about non-stop to everyone. They also pay him to get trained to fly jets. He gets a new car that doesn't look like a piece of junk, and he lives in a nice house. His flight school is no longer a frat house, and it's more of a family-friendly environment. Girlfriend 2 helps him out at the flight school, and life is pretty good for Booty Face Pilot. Now to put the icing on the cake, the FAA is looking for new blood to fill a highly prestigious job of pilot examiner. These are people who are pilots with a lot of experience, well-respected members of the local community with good judgement and a lot of power over student pilots and other flight schools. They also tend to make tons of money because they can charge any price people will pay to get their license and, well, there isn't a lot of competition. Bilingual pilot has friends at the FAA who like him, and he gets the job. He brags to people that it's like printing money tax-free since students have to pay in cash. Sounds weird, I know, but it's true. And he says the IRS doesn't need to know about it. So, booty bum pilot is now in his 30s at the pinnacle of his career, earning tons of money and has lots of power over people in the industry. And the success really goes to B-Star Pilot's head. Now, as you might have guessed, Beautiful Pilot is still the same person he was before, just with a lot more money, power, and success. I don't know about you, but I'm getting real vibes of like Wolf of Wall Street or something. Bestiality Pilot still likes to brag loudly that he is the best instructor around and he has the best flight school. He still tells people how bad other flight schools in the area are, even though he shouldn't be saying anything due to his job as an examiner. He talks about his friends and his students and tells embarrassing stories about them, but I don't think much of it because, well, they're funny and they're not about me. It doesn't really register with me at the time, but he is really good at getting other people to pile on and hate the people he hates, and really good at destroying people's reputations behind their back with things that turn out to be total lies. I start to hear him put down girlfriend too, and say things about her that I know aren't true. I don't pay attention to it because, well, there's a lot of loud guys in aviation who like to brag and make up stories. I continue to think of him as a friend, and have even confided in him about something that I am sensitive about and looked to him for advice. So, one day I'm in town and I was hanging out with him and a bunch of people that the beauty face pilot flight school shooting the breeze. After I left, I realized I forgot something, so came in the back way through the mechanic shop next door. I heard him talking in his very loud voice so everyone could hear, and that's when I realized he was talking about me. Not only was he talking about me, but he was totally lying about my embarrassing situation, made it totally different and a thousand times worse than what it was, and turned it into something that could potentially end my career. I thought he respected me and was my friend, but he was destroying my reputation and tearing me down behind my back. Luckily, nobody saw me and I slinked out the way I came in. I spent weeks feeling humiliated and betrayed. I reflected on the way I had seen him treat people and started to see things in a different light. Now, I knew that he had tanked some careers. He has a lot of contacts in the industry, and he has bragged about calling companies that are hiring and telling them not to hire certain people. One of his favorite sayings is that aviation is a small world and you shouldn't burn any bridges because it will come back and bite you in the butt. He bragged several times about bringing people down a peg and making someone he disliked lose a job they had applied for by calling the company owner. Usually, he did it because he wanted to take revenge for something he thought they did to him, but he was also jealous of people who graduated college, he didn't, and people who came from stable families, he didn't. He would always talk about how bad his home life was as a child and really try to get people to feel sorry for him. Keep in mind, he's an adult in his late 30s. I also knew that despite becoming more stable with Girlfriend 2, he had not changed his ways with women. He acted like he respected women in front of Girlfriend 2, but every time he was off on a trip, and even at his own airport, he could get pretty aggressive with women and would push them hard to see how far he could take things. I mean, as an example, he flirted aggressively with the receptionist at the building next door from his flight school. The receptionist was young and relatively new and had no idea Girlfriend 2 existed. 
She was a female, 18 or 19 years old, called the Booty Face Pilot Flight School and left a flirty message for Butthead Pilot, totally in line with how Butthead Pilot was interacting with her. I was not there, but a witness said girlfriend to play the message on the machine and made Butthead Pilot listen to it. He sheepishly said he had no idea why she would leave such a message, and girlfriend too told him in no uncertain terms that he was obviously leading her on, exploiting a young woman, and needed to stop. But then, instead of taking responsibility for his own actions, the Butthead Pilot took revenge on the young girl. He immediately complained to the airport manager and got her fired. She ended up packing her stuff in a box and leaving that same day. So, while B-Star Pilot is fun to be around as long as you're on his good side, he will frick you up if he thinks you are against him. I knew, and I had to be careful. I wasn't sure yet what I was going to do, but I decided I needed to be close in order to get more information. So, I sucked it up. Pretended I wasn't humiliated and had never heard him talking about me, and spent more days at the flight school when I had time off. Everyone at the flight school was in and out all the time, so sometimes I'd be the only person there, and I could easily sit down the B-Star pilot's desk and start scrolling through his files. And that's when I hit the jackpot. Bashful Pilot was logged into all the same accounts on his desktop that he was on his phone, email, messaging, everything. And boy, did he like to text. Now, one of the things some of his students complained about was that Booty Face Pilot would not stop texting, even when he was supposed to be instructing people in the plane. He even lost a few students who were so annoyed by him texting during a lesson that they went somewhere else for lessons. And now, I knew why. Biological Pilot was a sex addict. That's the only way I can describe it. Some people might describe him as a serial sexual harasser. His entire messaging history was full of cybersex, photos, videos, you name it. It was right there on his computer. I copied everything. I played the videos and recorded them on my phone. I took the snapshots. I took pictures of the texts. I must have spent an hour trying to copy this stuff, and I ran out of time because someone came back. So I minimized the tabs and casually left the office. I enlisted the help of another aviator that bumface pilot had screwed over, and we went through the treasure trove with a fine-tooth comb. We had to research the phone numbers to find out who these people were, and we classified them into known aviation and other. We even found that he was doing the nasty with a couple of people there at the flight school. Not quite the family-friendly environment everyone thought it was. It became clear that his activity made him totally ineligible to be an FAA examiner. Plenty of the texts were just plain harassment from a guy with a lot of power in the aviation industry, flirting with and pressuring young women who were hoping to become pilots for everything from adult photos to adult acts, sometimes pretending it was all just a big joke. He had no problem sending his stuff to women. That in of itself made him unqualified to be an examiner. However, he went even further and had sexual contact with at least one person he tested. This is extremely dangerous because it compromises his ability to evaluate if someone is able to pilot a plane safely. If he is threatened with a lawsuit or criminal charge and has to test one of these women or even someone they know, he might be coerced to pass an unsafe pilot, which could result in death. So, August 2017. My pilot friend and I decide the best thing to do is send the information to the FAA, but we know we have to do it anonymously because our careers could be on the line. So, we carefully packaged up a bunch of evidence, sent it into the FAA office that he reported to, and waited for the fallout. And nothing happened! The FAA literally ignored the evidence that they had of a sexual predator as a pilot examiner. This is a pretty old boys club environment, so maybe not too surprising. For our next attempt, we approached a young female pilot we identified from the evidence who seemed like she tried to stop the bumhead pilot when he got out of hand with her. We approached her to see if she would be willing to come forward and tell the FAA about her experience. She basically said all it would do was get her shamed and blacklisted, especially after she heard that the FAA did nothing with our anonymous package we sent in. She said bureaucratic pilot would most likely ruin her career and nobody would hire her, and he would make sure her reputation was destroyed. I had to agree. So, fast forward to 2018, I make him homeless!
I thought maybe I should just tell Girlfriend 2 about what I had found, but I kept chickening out. I also didn't want to be exposed myself, as I have to protect my career, and I was certain Butthead Pilot would try to destroy me if he found out. One morning, I was sitting in the school playing with the iPad while Girlfriend 2 was behind the desk. Wouldn't you know it? She is texting Buttface Pilot, who is flying, and Butthead Pilot is logged onto the flight school iPad I'm using. I can see her messages to him, and I can also see that he had cyber sex with someone the night before, and that he sent a video of himself getting it on to a student before that. I take photos for evidence, as usual. Girlfriend 2 is reading and not looking up at me, so I just mumble something and hand her the iPad with the sexting open full screen as I walk out the door. I wait in the parking lot in my car, and about 10 minutes later, Girlfriend 2 leaves the school with the iPad in hand and drives home. I made sure to be scarce the rest of the day as I didn't want to raise any suspicions about my involvement. Apparently, Girlfriend 2 owns the property where they live, so she immediately moved his stuff out and permanently banned the pilot, who started sleeping at the flight school. From what I pieced together that week, Girlfriend 2 was so alarmed by the evidence that she demanded the pilot see a therapist or she would report him to the authorities and he could potentially be arrested. One thing I should mention is that Girlfriend 2 has a child, which is important. Bilingual pilot was using her child to set up booty calls for himself, set up playdates with another child, have it on with the child's mother while the kids are playing video games. Wow, dude, this guy needs help. Bad posterior pilot slept in a cot in the flight school, stayed drunk, and looked like a homeless person for a couple of months before he ended up getting his own place. We also let his billionaire employer know that he was a sexual predator, as well as a few other people anonymously. I wanted to make sure Girlfriend 2 knew all the gory details of the pilot's activities in case she was even considering getting back together with him after he did therapy, so I kept sending her more information anonymously too. Young female pilot kept in contact and apparently had some conversations with other female pilots. Nobody was willing to go on record, but they all started sending anonymous letters to the FAA, hoping they would at least investigate him. The next thing I hear is that Bicycle Pilot is telling everyone that he broke up with Girlfriend 2, that she is crazy and trying to destroy his reputation, and that she's sending false anonymous letters to the FAA because she's jealous. From what we could tell, the FAA interviewed b b b b pilot but nothing happened because he blamed Girlfriend 2 for sending the letters. True to form, Butt-Faced Pilot also made sure everyone at the flight school hated her and felt sorry that he was being victimized by her. He also called the police and told them she was harassing him and told them he was banning her from his flight school. Nothing else happens. This all starts to die down and Butthead Pilot is still in an examiner. He still works for his billionaire boss as well as a very wealthy owner of a car dealership who also races cars, and he still runs a flight school with plenty of students. Again, he starts sleeping with another student at the school, who will now be named Girlfriend 3. Boom Boom Pilot continues to complain to everyone that he has been victimized by Girlfriend 2. Buttface Pilot gets Girlfriend 3, who has never even met Girlfriend 2, so wound up about her that she is spitting tacks every time she is mentioned. This is important later. Act 3, I guess, forwarding to 2019. Not only has the pilot not been punished by the FAA, but the FAA has increased his responsibilities so that now he can also conduct instrument flight exams for students. Young female pilot stays in touch and we talk periodically, sworn to secrecy, of course. We have a couple of male pilots who are also sworn to secrecy to protect our own jobs. When the FAA promoted the pilot to instrument examiner despite all of the complaints they had received, young female pilot and her friends get really ticked off. They are still unwilling to risk their own jobs, however. Reader, please don't judge me or young female pilot for this. It is very expensive to become a pilot, easy to get blacklisted by someone at the FAA or someone like this guy, and then you have no way to make a living or to pay back a huge amount of student loans if you're in debt. So, we hatch a plan to have her call Girlfriend 2 and tell her about the frustrations of the other female pilots in hopes that she will think of something to do. A detail I should mention, Girlfriend 2 does not fly for a career, and she has her own business not related to aviation. So, young female pilot calls Girlfriend 2 on someone else's phone. 
Girlfriend 2 doesn't know young female pilot, and we don't think she would betray her, but the situation is still very risky for young female pilots, so she discusses how frustrating it is that a serial sexual harasser gets promoted by the FAA with no consequences when the FAA knows about his harassment, and Girlfriend 2 agrees that she will try to make information public to protect other women. She agrees to post a review on Yelp and maybe some other platforms. I do my best to be at the Butthead Pilot's flight school when this goes down. True to her word, Girlfriend 2 posts a very straightforward and factual Yelp review and heads explode at the flight school. People are forwarding the review on and it spreads like wildfire all over the aviation industry. Think, owner sends messages of himself getting it on to female students. Yikes! And totally true! Other people have posted unfavorable reviews before, but Butthead Pilot has been able to take them down, falsely claiming that the review is a fake account or from a competing flight school. But there has been nothing like this that I know of. Betrothed Pilot and Girlfriend 3, who now appears to be a co-owner of the flight school and who has a posted positive review of the school on Yelp, go into damage control mode. Booty Face Pilot tries to get Girlfriend 2 arrested or at least harassed by his friends at the local police department. He's frantically trying to get the review shut down with Yelp. His brain is literally exploding, and I, along with everyone else at the school, am agreeing with him that Girlfriend 2 is a total, lying, crazy, conniving, vindictive bee, and that she needs to be punished. All while laughing on the inside. Busy Pilot next engages one of his instructors, who was friends with Girlfriend 2, to meet with her and ask her to take down the review, but she does not. Booty Face Pilot is finally successful in getting Yelp to remove the review a day or two later. The same process also happens with another platform that shall remain nameless. Bestiality Pilot gets everyone to bombard Girlfriend 2 with hate mail, which makes me glad I am still anonymous. Bumhead Pilot also tells the instructors at his school that they are not allowed to be friends with Girlfriend 2 and they will be fired if they are. Jesus, what is this? Is this guy like in high school still? <laughs> Finale! Fast forward to August 2019. Mission accomplished! So what happens to the pilot? We later found out that the FAA ended up doing an investigation on him. Finally! The pilot totally lost all of his examiner privileges. On top of that, his flight school had an FAA written testing center, which was also permanently closed. And even beyond that, the pilot can't have any affiliation with the FAA in any way, shape, or form. He can't even host an educational seminar or continuing credits class for the FAA. While some up-and-coming pilots and people outside the industry might never hear about Butthead Pilot being totally humiliated and losing his examiner status, believe me when I tell you that everyone in the profession knows what happened, and it has got to burn. But what happened to me? I am pretty much back to enjoying my time at the airport like I used to. There are still parties and flyouts, and ultimately some people don't care that Butthead Pilot sexually harasses women or destroys people's careers, but he has definitely been taken down a peg, as he likes to say. I just don't trust anything he says, and I don't heap onto other people he's trying to destroy. I still feel a little twinge of delight whenever I hear him tell new students that he used to be an examiner, but the liability insurance was too high, so he quit. Another thing that I get a chuckle out of is that the butthead pilot has started talking behind Girlfriend 3's back. I tried to warn her, and even sent her, anonymously, of course, information about the pilot. But so far, Girlfriend 3 is standing by her man, and I'm just sitting here eating popcorn watching the story unfold again. So, TLDR, friend who is a terrible pilot screws me over. I find out he's a sexual perf and get him fired from his job. An absolute shame it had to take so much effort to expose this guy, but also relieving that it finally achieved it. It's a shame he still gets to run a flight school, though. But I guess if his flight school was shut down, all those people would lose their jobs, so it becomes an issue of who else you want to affect with his uh, shaming. But what about you? Do you reckon they got their just desserts? Was it justified? You could argue that some of the women, like the receptionist, were on board with all the flirting and sexting being sent. Then there's the others he was getting it on with in the flight school. But I think it's fair to say, with the young female pilot character alone feeling like she was harassed unfairly, that alone is enough to dismiss the idea that he wasn't going too far with his behavior. 
If he wasn't in someone with such high power in the industry, I could understand if he at least went out of his way to apologise to these women for, you know, pushing the boundary when he might have not realised he was. After all, obviously some of these women would have slept with him purely because of his power status. Of course, that alone is a grey area in terms of what's actually being consented there. But if you start hooking up with every second or third person you work with or train at your workplace, eventually you're going to corrupt your mind to think and habitually believe that every person you meet is some new potential mate. For the record, this isn't me excusing his behaviour, more just trying to understand it. Similar to how you'd understand why a student is disruptive in class because they don't get enough attention at home. It doesn't deny you the right to smack him over the head with a little bit of discipline. But anyway, that's my thoughts on this story. Honestly, I wish the guy got more desserts, but I guess you just have to take what you can get. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on this roller coaster of a journey below. Alrighty folks, that does us for another video. That was a doozy. Jeez, over 20 minutes, my god. If you're this far to see my face, then clearly you liked the video, so pay your dues. Now I know there's no point asking you to subscribe because you're probably not going to, so I won't pressure you. I won't. Just, just know that I cry every night that you don't subscribe. It's your fault that my skin is very moisturized. What am I saying? Again guys, thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Love you always, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye. Bye.